Hey, before we get started on this video, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that next week, there won't be a new episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And believe it or not, this is actually because of Christmas. Because I know that when this episode is going up on YouTube, that it's already January of 2022. But I am recording this on December the 20th of 2021. So next week, uh, I will still be in uh, the full Christmas swing. So I won't be able to record. So... Basically, we'll be back in two weeks for episode six of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Last time around, we had an alchemist anguish, as well as my anguish too. Um, so the boys were uh, introduced to a bio-alchemist by Roy Mustang, and... Um, Basically, they were looking through some of his research to see if they could learn anything about getting their bodies back. And uh, the bioalchemist Shao Tucker was like, "Hey, you know, I'm. They're about to, you know, take away my my license and stuff because I'm not doing anything. I have a brilliant idea. I will create a new talking chimera." Thus, he fused his uh, his little his little daughter and her dog together into an abomination on mankind. And it was terrifying, and eventually the alchemist killer that was also introduced in this episode came in and killed Shao Tucker and put put little Nina out of our misery. So yeah, it was a surprisingly dark episode of, of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um, but, but it was weirdly like... It was funny in like a cosmic sort of way. Like it, it was, it was terrifying, but it was also, it was also just kind of funny because it was literally the worst possible thing I could think of right before it happened, you know? So, and I have since been educated that it has, uh, that moment is actually a bit of a meme, uh, with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So yeah. Um, so that is just, it's unfortunately hilarious, honestly. So yeah. But that is basically it. Are we going to get more horrifying things this episode? Who knows? We'll find out. Like always, the reaction is down in the description and in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So let's go ahead and get right into this episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Here we go. Alrighty. Oh, and since I have the... Uh, since I have the voice cast up here, I am going to assume, uh, that the girl at the beginning with Lust is Envy. That sounds right for their naming, so, Envy. Alrighty. Interesting episode. Very interesting. Um, not exactly like a, a pick-me-up from last episode, but, uh, pretty solid. Pretty, really, pretty, pretty solid. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the notes on this one. The first thing I wrote down is lust and envy. Uh, okay, so interesting stuff, getting a bit more with our villains. Uh, so we have lust, gluttony, and envy. Honestly, is that not the, is that not the seven deadly sins, you know? Like, is that where we're going with our sort of, uh, with our villains? I don't know, but, um... But that's pretty interesting. Very, very interesting stuff uh, with the three of them and their plan. So they have some sort of a plan for Ed, but they don't want to kill him yet, which is interesting. So uh, I'll be curious about that. But they are uh, sowing more chaos with uh, by having Envy turn into Father Cornello, which is interesting. So yeah. Um... So that's pretty interesting. Uh, we also have uh, our sort of, it seems like a separate villain, Scar, the Ishvalan, um, which is very interesting just because the name Scar is so interesting. I mean, yeah, it's like Scar, I feel like, is a very easy villain name, you know, between this Scar and, you know, Scar from the Lion King. Um, but it is a bit weird because, like, look, I'll be honest, um, <laughs> I've been... There is a uh, certain YouTuber named Scar that I follow, and he's not a villain, so I'm just so used to that for the name Scar. So, yeah. 
now I'm at a point where it's like, oh yeah, Scar. I guess I have to get used to that being a villain name again. Anyway. But yes, we do have our new villain, Scar, the Ishvalan, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, interesting stuff with uh, this whole Ishval... Uh, honestly, what sounds like an Ishval genocide, you know? Um, that's very, very interesting. I mean, you know... For since the first episode, we've kind of sat back and uh, kind of questioned uh, Fear Bradley, uh, which you guys did point out that uh, his first name is King. That's not a part of his title, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, so Fear Bradley, um, we've been c kind of questioning him from the beginning because he's a little sus, I guess you could say. And so yeah, so he ordered basically. A genocide through the state alchemists which is interesting you know it it's interesting especially on Roy because Roy um, the rest of them they don't seem particularly broken up about it you know um even though this is a horrible thing that had to happen or that they did do basically so you know, whether or not it had to happen maybe that's open for debate but um but yeah, so he doesn't really seem too broken up about it, despite the fact that it does sound like genocide, basically. Uh, or at least mostly genocide. I think between you and the Namekian, I've lost my touch in genocide. So, yeah. So that's very, very interesting. And honestly, yeah, it does sort of remind me of uh, Bakora from Yu-Gi-Oh! Where in the fifth season, they gave him a backstory where it's like, yeah, they... They basically had to, in order to create the Millennium Items, they had to sacrifice 100 souls. And um, because of that, they went to Bakora's town. Uh, you know, it was a town of, you know, thieves and bandits and stuff like that. But nonetheless, it was his home and they slaughtered everyone. Uh, they slaughtered everyone in Kal Elna in order to create these Millennium Items. And then he comes out for, you know, he comes back to try to get revenge. And it honestly sounds like the same thing here for Scar, where, you know, he's, um, he's here to, you know, get revenge on the genocide of his people. But it honestly sounds a bit more like maybe his people were a bit more innocent, you know? I mean, just from that backstory, it's like, okay, so there was some sort of conflict, obviously, between, uh, the Ishval, the Ishval people, and I, I guess just the state, and eventually they were sort of segregated into their own land, and unfortunate, it's basically an unfortunate accident, from what it sounds like, um, that there was this war with uh, the Ishval people, you know. So that's very, very interesting. Um, I'm wondering if maybe there's a bit more to it than we're being told. You know, if this is just, I mean, the fact is we're being told this by Roy who may not know all the details, you know? He says that a soldier accidentally shot and killed an Ishval, uh, an Ishval child, which started this war. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe there was a bit more purpose to it, you know? So we'll definitely have to see. Um, but yeah, we also got a look at sort of the map. I wonder if... Let me take it back a bit, see if I can... See if I can catch that map. Because the map was very, very interesting. You know, because we've said, you know, that this is uh, 1914, but um, we've said that this was 1914, but we don't, I mean, we don't know if this is specifically like Germany or something, or if this is uh, a different country, or even if the world is still similar, you know? So this will take me a second to uh, get back there. Okay, now it's a little it's a little difficult for me to see because of the because of the title and the description on the video player, but uh, but this is interesting. So it seems to be just a very circular place. You've got northeast, south area, northeast, southwest, and the central area. We've got uh, to the east we have the desert area. Uh, to the southwest we have Krata and. Uh, drachma to the northeast or the northwest which is interesting so it's definitely not a specific like um it's not a specific uh 
carbon copy of uh, the map of you know our Earth. It, this is definitely taking. Uh, well, I was about to say taking a page out of Attack on Titan's book, but that's only because of how I've watched these. But Attack on Titan took out a page, took a page out of this book with its map that it's you know this world is very similar to our world but it's obviously a, a different place basically uh it's just very similar to you know early 1900s uh germany so that's very very interesting so yeah so i'm very curious uh to learn more about uh, the ishval uh it's a very interesting idea i'll be curious how if at all if it ties into everything going on with less gluttony and envy um but i don't know it sounds like it's going to be a bit different uh that it's its own sort of plot line which i'm all right for you know uh, we we certainly have the time you know we're we've got 64 episodes to go through in uh this show so it's totally fine doing that so i like that um we've got uh ed and alphonse questioning things again which is interesting and you know it's very interesting because this is definitely a crisis moment of everything, and they're really questioning alchemy. And it's interesting because they pretty much bring up that it's like, yeah, we we already went through this, you know? We already went through this with our mother, you know? With what happened there, like, we questioned everything, and we questioned everything we knew, but then we kept going, and now it's here again, you know? And that's the thing, it's like, yeah, even after that, you know, they're able to move forward and stuff, but they stand. They can still, you know, get knocked down again, and this whole situation has definitely knocked them down. So yeah. Um, but then we had the fight uh, between Scar and Ed, which was interesting. Um, I like how specifically it's like, yes, he is, um, he is using alchemy, but he's not doing full alchemy because alchemy is breaking down and then reassembling. All he does is just break down. He doesn't actually reassemble, which is interesting. Um, and I like that. I like that distinction. Now, you know, they say like, oh, so is is he straying away from his god because he's using alchemy? I would probably guess that he views it as a necessary evil, you know, in order to bring down uh, probably, you know, a, again, sort of something from uh, Attack on Titan. Um, but, you know, he views alchemists as devils. Uh, especially after what happened to Ishval. So, you know, he's he looks at alchemists as devils. He's probably thinking, if I'm going to save what's left of my people from uh, from these devils, I too must become a devil, you know? So that's very, very interesting. And I like how he says, you know, alchemists, they violate, you know, the, the rules of the world, basically. You know, everything flows normally but alchemists come in and change things you know they bend things to their whim against what god designed basically um and that's very very interesting i like that so he while yes he is using this sort of you know devilry basically that um that the alchemists use he doesn't create uh which is interesting he will only go so far and he will but he will destroy basically so that's a very interesting distinction. Honestly, immediately, I really do like Scar. He's a very, very compelling villain. Um, we had everything with uh, both hands, that Ed needs both of his hands, which I never realized before. Um, but yeah, he needs both of his hands. So what it is is that, uh, from what Scar explained, is that he puts his hands together and that creates a circle, basically, and then he can do his transmutation. But he needs both of them in order to do that. So destroy his, you know, right hand, and there you go. That's done. So now, because it's gone, they're going to have to go back to Winry uh, in order to get a new arm. She's going to be pissed that he lost that arm, you know? Oh, well. Um, again, though, I'm telling you, my favorite characters are still Roy and Riza. The two of them are so... They're so interesting. They're so interesting. Like, I... It's one of those things where it's like, man, I would take an entire spinoff of the two of them. You know? Like, they are really, really damn interesting and cool. Um, and they work well off each other, you know? Now, okay, I'm assuming that because we didn't see Riza do any alchemy, that Riza isn't an alchemist. Um, which is why she was just using guns. So... 
uh, so I kind of like that too, where it's like, you know, you honestly think like, oh, these guys are so cool. They're going to be, you know, just these you know, really cool, badass people. But I like how they're also not actually the most powerful. Like, yeah, Roy has his flames and it seems like he always snaps in order to use his flames. But it seems like it's, uh, it seems like it's X-Men 3 where it, you had the one mutant who could control fire. Yes, but he couldn't create it from his hands. So he always needed you know, light. He basically strapped lighters to uh, to his wrists in order to create fire. You know, it seems like that's the case with Roy, which in this rainy day makes it a little uh, makes it a little difficult. Now, once that fire is created, whether or not he can actually like control it, I don't know. We'll have to. We haven't seen. Honestly, we've only seen him use his fire in uh, in episode one. You know, so I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know how much, you know, control he really has over it, but I, I like that where it's like, you know, these two, you know, when these two come in, it's like, oh shit, you know, now they're in for it, but then you have him who can't do anything, he can't do anything because it's raining and she just has guns and can't hit this guy, it's like, I kind of like that, I kind of like that, it was really funny, you know, that the two of them, the two of them are really, really good and sometimes they're really, really not, you know, but they're always cool and they're always fun and I enjoy that. And yeah, just, you know, I, I, I like, you know, Riza, you know, kind of comforting, you know, Ed and stuff like that. Um, you know, giving uh, her jacket at the end and stuff. Like, honestly, like the two of them are probably my favorite characters just immediately. I really do like them. So, yeah. Um, and then sort of the last thing I wrote down was uh, the decision to die, which is interesting. So I like that moment with uh, Al where he's like, no, you shouldn't just sacrifice yourself like no you need to keep going like let me take care of myself you need to keep going in order to get our bodies back in order to keep learning in order to prevent things uh from happening like they happened to nina you have to keep going and i like that it's different from the normal heroic sacrifice you know you know while yes the heroic sacrifice is you know th there's nothing wrong with that per se but i like how it says like you know don't just immediately sacrifice yourself, you know, fight to live, you know, fight to live, do everything in your power to make sure that, you know, you can keep going, you know, for the betterment, basically, of yourself, people, the world, just keep, you have to keep going, you have to keep moving forward, and while, yes, a sacrifice could be heroic, that also is not moving forward, so I did like that, that was a really good uh, moment there, too. Um, but yeah, another really, really great episode, which I shouldn't be surprised, you know, but these, these episodes are really, really good and really, really compelling. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that we're doing this now, you know, <laughs> for a show that I've been, you know, that we've been kind of going back and forth, like, oh, are we going to do it for like three years? We've had the possibility of me doing this and only now am I doing it, but I'm so invested in it and I'm really, really enjoying it. And we will be back in two weeks for episode six. Yes, we are taking our Christmas break, or I'm taking a Christmas break. You guys, hopefully you guys had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see you guys back in two weeks for episode six. So with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around to any of those. There's a playlist for all of my Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood reactions, as well as another video you can go click on if you want. There's also a, sub a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. I think I need a break.